so I will just see one person at a time. Mm -hmm. You'll see the person that's speaking. Okay, all right. that, that'll, that'll have to do, I guess, when you're working well, on an night. It's easier to focus that way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Judy, did you have another suggestion? No, I, I, like I said, I messed with it the other day and I never could get it to do that. Um, I've got a gallery view on my iPad as well. Okay. Huh. Huh. Okay, well, I guess we'll just go with what we got. Thank you. All right, who's Facebook Live down here? That's, I think they're, they're recording. That's the recording. Oh, that's the recording? Uh, yes. Hi, Gary, it's Debbie. It's Hi, Debbie. Debbie. Let's wait for a couple of minutes for folks to get on and then we'll get started. There's six of us right now. Plus, plus Gary, are you going to be able to show content on the applications for those two candidates for the committee? Um, well, you got a copy of them, so I'm not going to put them up on the screen. Okay. I'll pull those down from my big boy computer then. It looks like it's a big boy screen. You're looking up to the sky. Yeah, it's like it's like at the space shuttle monitors uh, up above my uh, iPad here. So I'm communicating to you guys on my iPad because my computer is locked out from using Zoom. Oh, really? Yeah. So, Chris, how did you get how did you get uh, the gallery uh, if you're you're working on an iPad like I am? It says, well, participants, let's see. And I, all I got when I hit participants was the list of people who are participating. And then it said invite, and then it said send them an email. And <clears throat> Yeah, let me look around here because I was on the same view you had, but then I switched something and it went to the gallery. Okay. And when you're talking gallery, I mean, I have everybody's picture above your picture right now. So you okay. don't have that. I only have the person that's speaking. Okay. And they thought it was perhaps because I'm on my iPad. Okay. So, and I pulled up everything they said. And one of the things, the switch was already on. So, and Judy said she had had difficulty with it the other day and never did get it to do it. So. I'll just see who's speaking. When I'm talking, my picture does not come up on my computer. Does it come up on yours? You're on my, you're full screen to my computer. Oh, okay. Well, and I can't see myself. I'm in the corner and I'm down in the corner. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's a learning process. It is. I had a Zoom medical meeting last week and it was quite simple, but she kind of, the, the PA or the, she's a practitioner pretty much handled it from the other end. So, and there was no gallery, so. I really like the gallery view because that way I can tell if Debbie's rolling her eyes at me when I'm talking. <laughs> Steve, I wouldn't dare do that. Uh-huh. I wouldn't. How is the city, how is the city meeting? Are they doing a Zoom meeting? We are doing a Zoom at 5.30 tonight, our first Zoom okay. uh, City okay. Council work session. Okay. All right. All right, we'll just wait another minute here. 4.05, we'll get started. Gary, are we going to have anybody on like Tom or, or um, Joan or anybody? Well, Tom is here. John, uh, John and Rick are both here, and Judy's here. I see Joan trying to connect right now. Okay. okay. Oh, I see. I just, I have to, I got it. Rick, got it? I got it here. You can also go up in the upper right corner and click on full screen. Oh, and that screwed me up. Wow. Oh, now I'm back to. I've lost your faces. We see you. Sad. No, we see you, Debbie. Sad. 
Yeah, well, I've totally lost everybody's faces now. <laughs> hmm. Now, what do I do? Are you on a laptop? Yeah. What do you see right now? Oh, I have, I have, I'm back to uh, Google. Oh. Oh, it's down, go down on your bottom bar and you should see the Zoom. My feed, election 2020. Mm. You should see like a little, a little movie camera. Okay, okay, guys. Or you can just yeah. go back to the invitation that Tammy sent you and the link's right there. I better do that. That's probably the easiest way. Yeah, I'm going to close this out and start again. I'll be right there. Okay. Oh, there you are. Hi, Gary. Hello. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> all right, don't really? touch anything, all right? You, you okay, I won't touch anything. <laughs> I'm taking notes, by the way, guys, so you have to be nice, to, you have to be patient with me. Okay. I'll try not to make it too long for you. Okay, that's good. It is weird. Right. Okay, um, everybody ready to get started? Okay. All right, sure. we'll call this meeting to order. Ooh, Ruth Hatcher. Okay. Uh, we have no, we have no visitors. So let's what, let's go ahead and get into the amenities. Not all of them are open as we know. Uh, or they, uh, some more of them opened yesterday. So let's just go through. And if you don't have an amenity that's open right now, um, we'll just pass on that. So, uh, Debbie, we can start with you. The trails are in great shape. I walked them this weekend and everything's clean. The trash has been picked up, the doggy bags, everything's fine. Um, I was over at Branchwood today and the building itself, it looks great. They divided the equipment between the workout room and the exercise room. So it's all separate. There's about 50% of the equipment is roped off that you can't use. And they're going to rotate that, I understand. Um, what you do is you sign up for an hour of exercise. So I called in today. I got a 9 o'clock sign up time. So I have between 9 and 10. And there was only two or three of us there. And the pool is open for lap swimming only. Um, there will be no birthday parties and the, right now. And there'll be no pool instructions or library access. And there will be no classes. But other than that, everything seemed to be working well today. And other than the phones, the phones were down. They kept cutting in and out. But other than that, everything seemed to be working okay at Branchwood. Debbie, yeah. uh, the, the lap swimming, is it all day now? I believe it is. And you okay. have to sign up. Yeah, you have to call in and sign up, and you can call in seven days in advance. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, thanks, Deb. Hey, before we move on, Deb, did you mention dog parks? Are the dog parks open now? I, I may have missed that. No. no. Not open. Yeah. Are they on the schedule to be opened at some point? Do we know? Don't know. Uh, we're doing some work down there uh, to reseed. We took advantage of this closure for that. And so, um, and I did talk to the city of Bentonville today. They plan to reopen on the 28th, I believe. So uh, it would be my intention to open somewhere around that time as well. Okay. And Rick, you won't be opening the little dog and the big dog park, will you? There is no little dog park anymore. Okay, we're, okay. Just the we're large still dog. Doing, okay. We're still doing the alternating uh, time schedule. Yep. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, Ken's not available today. So I did drive by Tyree Park and it, it looks pretty much the same. So let's see. Um, Jackie had uh, a family matter that came up and so she uh, had to beg out just a few hours ago, but she said there was quite a few people at Lake Ann. They had uh, about 20 boaters out there, I think she said, and there was just a lot of, a lot of folk that were out there because of the good weather. And uh, let's see. 
we don't have Mary. All right, and then Jan, Loch Lomond's <laughs> closed, isn't it? So, well, actually, the dog parks are, but uh, the restrooms are closed due to the COVID nineteen. Uh, but there are a lot of walkers still down there. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of them have their dogs, and that was true last month as well. The park looks good. The, the grounds are kept mowed and, and really clean. The pavilion's clean, and the trash appears to be picked up regularly. Really didn't see anything in need of repair. Updating the dugouts on the ball diamond would be nice as budgets allow, and we've talked about that before. Uh, members seem to be in agreement that it's okay to have the dog park closed, at least for now because most of them were walking to get exercise. They were walking their dogs on the trail anyway to get exercise for themselves as well. So uh, I was telling Rick earlier, there was a ball game going on when I was there and uh, several spectators were there. They were observing their social distancing. Um, and I, I wonder about the restrooms, uh, when those might be reopened with, with the ball diamond picking up and some activities picking up on, in the park. I don't know about those restrooms, although it's because of COVID. And uh, maybe Rick or maybe Tom or somebody could address that. I don't. I don't know because there's kids down there playing ball, and you know, they're going to need the restroom while they're there. Other than that, looks good. At the time uh, we anticipate the restrooms may open on the on May 22nd, but we we're waiting for directives from the uh, governor's office at this point before we open <laughs> up. Um, so possibly on that date. Okay, thanks, Tom. All right, thank you. Uh, gun ranges, uh, I have no report. Do we know when they might open? So rifle pistol is currently open. Uh, it's never mm -hmm. actually closed. Uh, trap and skeet were slated right now for the 16th. This is All right, thank you. And Val? Um, Blowing Springs is also closed. Um, the trails are open and the RV park is open, but the bathrooms are closed. And from what I understand, there are no events planned there so far in the coming weeks. And that's it. Yeah, I can tell you, though, that those trails near Blowing Springs and the trails everywhere are way busier than they used to be. So folks have found the trails during the pandemic. And just a quick update. This is Joan. I don't know why, but my uh, video isn't working. So um, Blowing Springs Park, the back of the park is close to parking, but it's not really closed. If people want to walk back there, or bikes they can get back there and then the campground is open. But I'll give more details on my update. All right, thanks, John. Uh, let's see, all right, Steve. Yeah, Tanyard Creek, if you've driven by there any time in the last couple of weeks, if it's a pretty day, I see the POA out there yeah. having to do parking management, trying to get people to realize, hey, does everybody know we've got like 90 miles of trails here? You don't have to come <laughs> to your Creek and walk around yeah. the, this area. Yesterday or the day before. Right. And uh, so I joined uh, my uh, Tanyard Creek uh, waste management team this morning. And uh, we started off in the parking lot and it was pretty well trashed. And we cleaned it all up and we were expecting the worst on the trails when we went out on the trails there was hardly any trash out there. Occasional, uh, you know, a candy bar wrapper or, or a cigarette butt. But uh, for all the use it gets, I would have expected it to be a lot worse. And it was in, actually in pretty good condition. Uh, Avalon is, uh, is active. I see the dam is active with uh, people enjoying swimming. Uh, I see the Lake Patrol uh, stepping up their approaches, their contacts with uh, users of those amenities. Uh, I've seen that on both ends of the lake, on the, the beach end and the dam end. So uh, I agree with what Chris said. I think Bella Vista residents are really making use of the outdoors. I know it's probably been one of the things that's uh, saved me during this time is being able to be outside. 
and I can't imagine a better place to have to go to a quarantine situation yep. than Bella Vista, Arkansas. Don't tell anybody I said that. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't think there's a better place that you could suffer through some of this. Uh, can you imagine being in a city and not knowing what Ooh. the back porch feels like, not knowing Ooh. what a trail and, and a sunshine and a waterfall, what that can do to lift your spirits. I, I can't imagine what the, some of those urban dwellers uh, are going through right now, but it's, uh, this is, this is a great place and we're going through a tough time, but I can't think of a better place to have to go through this than Bella Vista. Well said, Steve. Well said. Yeah, we're lucky. That's all I have. All right. Thank you. Uh, Chris? Well, over at London Park, things look fine there. I'm getting real picky about this, but one thing I noticed is that the trees are overgrowing the street a little bit, you know, so they're kind of encroaching on the, the north side and from the top. So on a long-term plan, I'd add uh, trimming back some of the branches and bushiness a little bit, just to clean it up a bit. Otherwise, it's a fine looking park. And of course, the restrooms are closed. Over at Medfield, Yesterday, there was some folks out there. It wasn't really too busy um, at the time I went by. It's clean and all, and there was some folks playing pickleball. And the playground looks like it was kind of maybe half open. There was some um, caution tape flags still on the equipment, and there was still like an X over the hours of operation sign. But uh, from an overall perspective, clean and tidy and operational and you know there's nothing really to report that's it all right thank you that will conclude the uh the amenity reports so new business uh committee candidates review i want to go through this and then what i'd like to do is just find out how everybody's doing and what are you hearing from our membership uh, and, and when you stop and talk with folks, you could be at your neighbors or if you're out on a trail walking or, or biking or something like that. So with that, um, as you know, we've got two slots to fill and we've got two candidates. Uh, I'm not sure, Tammy, I don't think we have anything posted out, do we anymore on the, um, on the uh, websites or do we? No, we don't. Okay. So anyway, let's, um, you probably had an opportunity to review these things. So let's just go through candidate number one. Um, any thoughts? This is somebody who was who's, who's on a candidate number one, Gary. Well, we're going to kind of keep the names out seeing as we were, uh, Oh, okay. Never mind. Okay. Gotcha. It's the other candidate. Is it a male or a female? Female. <laughs> okay. Oh, one. okay. Candidate one is female. All right. Yeah. Yeah. It was in the last email I sent you all. I know. I know. Got it. All right. I like to, I tell you what I liked about this candidate is that she hasn't lived here for a very long time, but she has jumped right in, volunteer at the animal shelter, mm -hmm. uh, assistant coach, of girls softball uh has passed volunteer experience uh does fundraising for juvenile diabetes I, I just saw a lot of community activity that made me feel good about that candidate yeah i i agree woven right in already yeah i agree also i agree i agree yeah, she um yeah, she was on the community involvement uh committee before it fully oh okay all right so and she was very active in um uh, wanted to be on the recreation committee when we only had, uh, you know, I, think it was, I remember her. Uh, yeah. She's also offered to be and work with us on the welcome meet and greet. Oh, good. Did she uh, yeah. agree to being the secretary? <laughs> <laughs> good question. <laughs> it doesn't have to be only a woman, Gary. What she's doing, she just happens to be the first candidate we're talking about. Oh, okay. I just thought I'd mention that. 
I've been to school. <laughs> All right, so it sounds like um, we feel pretty good about candidate number one. Um, let's go to candidate number two and get some thoughts. It's kind of hard to learn much about this candidate. Certainly a good education and everything, but not much involvement in the community other than being here for 11 years that that is indicated on the application anyway. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. It's, it's, it's um, minimally filled out. So there's not a lot for us to go on. He does like to do things. Obviously he's very active with swimming lakes exercise. So, you know, he's certainly obviously using the facilities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Tom, I want you to pull, it, pull his file and see how much he uses the activity. <laughs> yeah. um, so Gary, I, Gary, when I joined, you put me through a rigorous uh, job interview, and I wondered if you were I doing remember. interview candidates. I remember. Yeah. Do, is that a matter of routine? Have, have you interviewed these candidates? Uh, no, I have not yet. I wanted to get feedback from all y'all about them, and I think... Um, Let's see if we're, we're in the mid, middle of May, uh, we might want to post, uh, depending upon how you feel overall about this candidate, we could, we could post again and have Tammy put out, we're looking for somebody on the recreation committee again. Uh, if you have, if you know any people who are community minded that might want to join our group, it might be another opportunity to get some other applicants as well. And, uh, June is when I would like to have those candidates come in. I'd like you to last time and tell us a little bit about themselves and why they want to join the committee. So are you saying, Gary, in June, you would like the candidates to present to the rec committee before they start in July? Yeah, it's like we've okay, done that's before. Just, that's for my notes. Okay, yeah. okay. Because it gives them an opportunity to not only make sure they sit in on one of our meetings, uh, if we're all back together, yeah. you know, and uh, and then be able to have them ask questions of us as well. I guess my thought is then from from the candidate number two, uh, how many folks want to go ahead and move forward with that one right now? Okay. If I had to choose one or the other, the first candidate would be my uh, number one pick. Yeah. I agree with Chris. Same with me. Hold on. All right, Tammy, would you be able to go ahead and, and repost the, our op, uh, position that's open at this time? I can have marketing put it in the recreation update and the POA update. That would be great. Thank you. You're oh, welcome. So do we, do we, did you say, Gary, we do have two openings? We have two openings, yeah. Two openings, two candidates. So let's let's not rule this uh, second candidate out. Mm -hmm. I oh, think, no. you know, no. pending an interview or something, he may he may convince us that he's been around long enough, he's a good user in the community and, and he wants to help the uh, recreation committee. He might he might end up being a good candidate. I just don't know enough about him. I don't right. know the gentleman and uh, a little more information would be useful. Yeah, and I agree with you. And I wasn't to say no to this candidate, but there's 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 some hesitation with everybody, simply because of the lack of information. So I want to give some other folks an opportunity as well to be able to, to post yeah. for the position, so to speak. If they, uh, and that's why if you if you know folks that are that are at community minded that would that would be a decent fit for us, then then have them get an application from Tammy. But if not. Um, We'll invite the two candidates in to our June meeting and uh, have them tell us about themselves. Sounds good. Put that down. So, Gary, do you want me to forward that volunteer's name to the board for approval, or do you want to wait until June? What do you want to do? Um, that's a good question. Remember, you've got two separate boards you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand. What do you mean, Ruth? Two boards. If if you present it in June or in May, you've got one board. If you present it in June, you've got a new board. Yeah, that's right. Well. So. 
So our, let me get this straight. Are Jan and Mary done as of this month? As a start? No. no, unfortunately it doesn't work that same way. They're done in July, July 1st will be the new board. But the, yeah, that's, okay. the board that votes, the POA board that votes, we're done June 1st. Okay. Yeah. So if you want us to vote on your present candidates, it has to go to the May one. If not, it will be a new board voting on them. Well, okay, let's do this. So I, I'd say let's go ahead and, because um, we're not going to do everything here in May, uh, let's, let's go ahead and, and my thought is to go ahead and uh, have candidate number one be approved by the current board in place. What do you think? I, I agree. This is Debbie. Yeah. They certainly know her. Yeah. Yeah, she's on, been on a committee already, so there's a Correct. comfort in that. Yeah. Yeah. And as I recall, it was a tough decision when we had to, when we had to eliminate her when she wanted to be on before. So yeah. I think her interest is absolutely there. So. Okay. Uh, Val? I say we go ahead and vote her on or okay. have her come for an interview. All right. Then with that, um, let's have the, uh, the current board review and then the 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 new board will, will take care of our second candidate in june okay perfect okay. okay um so how's everybody been doing as it relates to the whole the whole change in, uh, in in the way we 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 conduct ourselves in our business. Or have you been speaking with any of the some of our, our you know our membership out there? Let's see what they have to say. That's Mary Henning. Yeah, I'm running a little late. <laughs> Hi, Hi, Mary. Hi, everyone. <laughs> I didn't notice. Well, to, to be honest with you, Gary, I've been kind of keeping my distance. Mm -hmm. I've been talking to a lot of golfers, tennis people, and hikers. So, um, yeah, they're pretty content because they're outside doing something with other people. And so the big groups, they're getting a little bit restless. You know, the indoor groups. Yeah. We had three quarts of pickleball yesterday going on, so they were all anxious to be out there. Sure. Sure, they were. You know, Mary, um, you missed it, but do you um, want to give us any feedback on Reardon? Oh, yeah. Kathy's running a tight ship there. <laughs> I talked to her, and they've been open for a week now, and they're running about 50 people a day. And she has it set up so they come into the front door and they um, do a questionnaire and they're kind of screened. And then they go and they're allowed to exercise for one hour. And then after their hour is done, um, they exit on the side door. And then the, everything is disinfected and the next crew comes in. They've taken half of the machines out of the um, area, put it into the uh, Grand Hall. So all the machines are like 12 feet apart. And all the um, members, as soon as they're done, they're cleaning also. They wear masks except when they're on like the treadmill because it's hard for um, just for respiratory yeah. reasons. Yeah, need to breathe hard. So, yeah, they're doing good. Um, tennis, I talked to Jake and they're very busy because it just opened again um, in the morning and evening. The U.S. Tennis Association, they're going to be making the decision when leagues can start. And he doesn't feel that they're going to be able to have spring leagues. So um, that decision, they should find out like May 31st. So, and he's teaching again, but in um, individual, very small groups. So, but they're just happy to be back in the courts. All right, thank That's you. That's about it. It's going good though. All right, great. 
<clears throat> All right, staff reports. Turn on, Tom. So, uh, unlike uh, when we were closing the amenities and not getting a tremendous amount of guidance uh, from the state and so forth, we're now getting a lot of guidance uh, in the reopening. And so, uh, we try and follow those directives as best as possible. I mean, you know, I got one, the one here for uh, uh, pools and for restaurants uh, and gym, for gym facilities. And so we're following these uh, as absolutely closely as possible uh, to make sure that we open them uh, in the right way. Uh, so uh, it, it's good to see uh, people uh, back in uh, the gym facilities, back in the restaurants. Uh, it's good to see some life back into the place. Um, uh, but uh, definitely not, it's still not normal. And uh, you know, come, if you come into the restaurant, you're required to wear a mask. And uh, so you know, it's definitely different, but we're glad to see some people out and about now. Tom, has there been quite a bit of use with the restaurants just ordering and picking food up? Mm -hmm. so, it's been really good. Um, you know, we're probably doing um, 30 to 40 percent of what we normally do just from uh, pickup and uh, the not bad. delivering, wow. which is not bad. Um, really got to compliment a lot of our membership. Uh, they've been very generous with their tipping, you know, recognizing that our servers are, you know, taking a hit because of this. So uh, really pleased with it. Uh, on Easter, which was, you know, last month, um, we had the prepared meals and we sold 250 in that day. So that wow. was really a strong day. So, uh, you know, we're, we're making the best of, of it. Um, I've spoken with a couple of local restaurants and we're pretty consistent with how they're doing compared to how we're doing. Um, so I think everybody's looking forward to being open, but doing so in a responsible manner. Good. Thank you. We're open for lunch today, Tom. We were open for lunch. We only had about a dozen people come through, um, you know, but first day weather wasn't great. Um, sure. We'll see as, as people get more comfortable and so forth. So, you know, we'll see how it goes. Okay. And Thank we're you. still offering uh, curbside service. Tom, yes. am I correct to say that you are recommending reservations at both locations? Um, at, at BV, you don't have to have a reservation, uh, but uh, at Lake Point, we do encourage you to have a reservation. Okay. And well, we had a good, yeah, we had a good thing happen. Carol Kaufman, who's one of the golfers, she initiated a program where we asked everyone to just throw in $10. And I went around our neighborhood and we ended up raising like $1,000 that she took to the restaurants, the managers to disperse uh, among the employees, just to oh. give them a little support. Oh, so, I mean, that was a real cool. good effort for them. That's really fantastic. Oh, yeah. nice. Tom, I think I saw on, uh, uh, in the know the other day that there's a limit of 10 people at each table. Isn't that what, did you say that? that? That's and it's correct. Not enforced. Uh, Two big, uh, a couple of big requirements. You have to wear a mask until you order. The bar is closed. All the bar mm -hmm. stools are out of there. All the tables are um, at least 10 feet apart. We've actually brought out the tape measure. They're actually 11 feet apart in most cases. Um, and so we're really, re you know, limiting the number of people. Um, we're at about 33%, which is what we have to be uh, according to the state, no more than uh -huh. that. Uh, uh -huh. So we're limiting the number of people that come through. Um, and, uh, but, you know, if you feel comfortable, come on out. We'll take care of you. Okay. Servers wear masks and gloves at all times. And only 10 people at the most at one table. At one particular table. And, and we actually have the tables marked off so people can't grab a table and move it because yeah. it might get within 10 feet of another table. And so, you know, normally we, we move tables around to accommodate, uh, sure. need, but we can't do that right now. Uh, so in some cases, you know, we normally we try and be as accommodating as possible, but in, in, in these, in this instance, we're having to be, you know, stern. It's the, 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 the directive from the state says you have to wear a mask to come in. We're going to make you wear a mask or you're not coming in. Uh, and we do have masks that we can provide. Um, similar like Joan is that she has allows lap swimming, 
but you can't try and get flexible and while I'm water walking in the lap. No, that's not lap swing. You know, you can't play in the, in the lap. You know, you have to, it says lap swing and only lap swimming. And we're going to follow direct, the directive. Any other questions? I guess the lap swimming in the hot tub is out of the question. <laughs> For you, you can do it. No problem at all. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Rick and John. So I'll start off with uh, lakes and parks. Um, we're going to have a lakes committee meeting on Wednesday. And during that meeting, we're going to discuss the next lake drawdown, which uh, if we follow a schedule would be like Freyburn, unless there's some reasons to do something different or maybe nothing at all. Um, we're seeing incredibly heavy usage on all the lakes. There have been a number of times when one couldn't find a parking spot uh, on one of our accesses. Uh, that's happened numerous times. And at Stony Kirk, we're looking at uh, relaying that parking lot so that we can accommodate more traffic. We've hired a fisheries student for the summer. This is someone who's uh, pursuing a fisheries degree at Arkansas Tech. We used him to fill a grounds maintenance position, but when he can lend a hand with our fisheries department, he'll do that too. So he'll get some uh, experience there. He had an internship in Illinois that was canceled due to the uh, COVID situation. So um, he's happy to, to get some experience with us and we're happy to have him. He started today. Let's see. Um, our Lake Rangers just completed their first round of uh, uh, checks for boat registrations on the lakes and calls are being made this week uh, for people who didn't have their boats properly stickered, just like we always do, but we're just a month behind this year because we, we allowed people uh, an extra month because of our member services offices being closed to walk in traffic. Like we talked about earlier, uh, the dog park is currently closed. We're taking this opportunity to make some improvements. Uh, we've already uh, kind of boxed in the water hydrant uh, with a larger boxed in area and some gravel, and that'll prevent um, the mud hole that previously existed around that area. Uh, so that will likely be closed for uh, a couple more weeks. We're looking at reopening on or before May the 28th. And we might have to uh, fence off a, a couple small sections until we can get some grass established. But the park, the main body of the park will be open at that time. Rick, are you going to divide it up? Are you going to divide it for some small and large dogs? No, no ma'am. Um, uh, the, the, the amount of usage that it currently gets, um, if we divide it at all, um, we would be battling uh, worn grass forever. So we're going to continue with the small dogs, you know, at, at one time and the large dogs at another time in hopes that we can uh, get past in this next year's budget, uh, a new area for smaller dogs okay. to, um, to make up for the one we lost. At Tanyard Creek, like was mentioned earlier, we have had a tremendous amount of users there as we've had on all the other uh, trails as well. And um, I would encourage people to get out and take advantage of some of the some of the new trails and, and kind of alleviate some of the congestion there. We've put up fencing to keep people off the grass and directed people uh, to overflow park at the driving range. And uh, that's been successful for the most part. I wanted to make a shout out uh, to the volunteers that uh, Steve is now a part of. Um, they have been tremendous at picking up trash um, even their normal day was Tuesday morning, but they're getting out there on other days to, to get the trash picked up and to help us out where they can. Um, and in our fisheries and lakes uh, ecology department, our fish sampling has been postponed to the fall because it requires such close uh, work with each other. Uh, that won't be too much of a problem. Our Brittany trout stocking, our final one was done on April the 16th of this year. 
Um, and so uh, for the next month or so, uh, trout fishing will be uh, continuing there before it gets too hot. Our E. coli sample was taken in anticipation of opening the beach and the state sample came back as, as a three. Our in-house sampling was a zero about a week before that. And so that's excellent. Um, if you remember the threshold for beach closure is 127. Um, so that's really good. And weed control continues on Loch Loman and a little bit on Lake Avalon. Uh, and I, we're gonna get down and start cleaning up the beach of the trash and sticks and that kind of thing beginning Wednesday. Um, John, I'll let you take over for the gun range. So uh, over at Rifle Pistol, like I said, we, we never really closed. We didn't close that facility just because we kept, uh, we felt like we could get everybody spread out enough to, uh, to kind of keep them safe. Uh, but we did have some additional rules in place and we will have those additional rules in place uh, for a while to come. Uh, over at the Rifle Pistol range, we're not allowing non-shooters on the range at this time. Uh, we're limiting the range, each range to 10 people per range uh, and there can be no more than two people at any given station uh, and then of course because of those restrictions we're also imposing a two-hour time limit so uh, if your rifle shooters uh, they're really the only guys that kind of butt up to that but they kind of have to get in there get what they're going to get done and, and, and get out um, of course uh, as far as just sanitizing we're sanitizing all the benches and everything over at rifle pistol about every two to three hours depending on usage <clears throat> uh like i was saying earlier we're gonna try to get or we we are gonna open trap and skeet on the 16th this coming saturday uh we're still having uh an issue with our septic fields out there we think there's a possibility that could be fixed by this weekend if not we do have uh portable uh, toilets out there uh, for people to use and we'll have hand washing stations outside. Uh, as we open that range, uh, we're going to uh, have some additional restrictions on that range as well. Uh, so we're not going to allow anybody inside the range master's building unless they're using the restroom or unless they're uh, needing to purchase an item or around. Uh, we're also going to ask all of our doctors to stay inside their vehicles unless they have coaching you know uh, somebody that they've got on a field out there um we'll also be doing the the same sort of thing out there we'll be sanitizing all of our services every two to three hours uh and we'll also run all of our fields just to get everybody spread out and then uh finally uh classes i've, I've frozen the classes for right now I've got a backlog that I've got to work through. Uh, hopefully I can start with small groups by the end of this month uh, and and perhaps, you know, re next month. Uh, so kind of hoping that uh, maybe in a couple of weeks I can start a class and get a small group out and we can begin to work through that backlog. Uh, that's all I've got. Thanks, John. Thank you. Hey, Gary, can I jump in? I, in my report, I failed to mention some uh, really good, important news that uh, compared to last year, we've sold 900 additional activity cards compared to the wow. wow. okay. impact of uh, COVID in place. So we're doing really, really well. Uh, and one last thing, we need to congratulate Rick for being a papa. <laughs> For the fifth and final time. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, wow. you betcha. <laughs> and promises, yeah. promises. Yeah. Get a basketball team. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, congratulations. Congrats. All right. Um, Joan. Gary, I'd love to ask Tom one question. Did budget wise, with 900 plus activity cards over last year, was this kind of expected or, or what were the, you know, what were the, the feelings on the budget? Well, the budget's a little bit hard question because COVID's having such a 
impact across yeah. the board. You know, we talked about restaurants earlier uh, and so forth. Um, you know, that being uh, 900 over, that's a good thing, but there's a lot of things that uh, are not so good right now financially. Uh, we're doing the best we can. The team has uh, made some cutbacks. Uh, we'll learn a lot more when we get the financials for April uh, okay. and then uh, May as to how how rough it's been. But, uh, you know, it's, it's it's been a tough time for us uh, because of the, because of the uh, restrictions that have been placed upon us and the closures and so forth. Okay, thank you. All right, Joan. Hi, everyone. Um, Joan. Happy to see your Joan. faces live. Um, most of you know what's going on, but just to give you a little bit more detail um, regarding the trails. <clears throat> As mentioned, very, very busy, um, you know, so then, and I believe that there's been a number of people exploring the trails who would not have necessarily gotten out there, new people, new local people who might not necessarily have gotten out there as fast, but given uh, the boredom and the number of other things that um, people aren't allowed to do they're hitting the trail so it's been a lot of families out there walking hiking biking um, one of the concerns that I have that uh, I'm going to be working with um, <clears throat> uh, bike Bentonville and bike NWA on is I'm seeing more people out on the trail <clears throat> whether it's paved or soft surface without helmets and uh, and I'll also be talking to the city maybe something we have to get um, look at for an ordinance. I've seen um, small children with parents, and this is, um, as someone is a longtime biker, it's one of those things that when I see it, it, it scares me. Um, and given how busy the trails are, um, you can you can have an accident pretty quickly. So that's one of the things that's sort of in the queue that I'm working towards. Just an update regarding the Metfield um, Greenway connector. The city signed off on their paperwork, <clears throat> and the phase one is going to start in the back of Blowing Springs, and we expect that to happen any day now. They've been out surveying. If you know where our sump station is, sort of at the very tail end of the RV campsite, from that area to the back of the park, that's where the uh, connector is going to start first. Um, I've asked them to try and get done by June um, in that area, and then they can come back in the fall and November when we slow down again. But we've also put some restrictions on the contractors. For instance, they can only work from 9 to 5 uh, during the day so they don't disrupt people in the evening and on the weekends. Um, lastly, uh, we are working on some of the trailheads to make them more significant. If you've been to Pop and Mike lately, you might have noticed more striping that goes alongside the fence that takes people down to the trail that picks up below Pop and Mike, the beautiful part of the trail. And so that striping was done. And then just Thursday, we striped 10 spots over to uh, the far side of the Kingsdale Pool parking lot, which will be the uh, Reardon Kingsdale uh, trailhead. There is a post up already for the kiosk, which this will have the sign, but for now they've at least done some of the striping. So all that in progress because effective May 15th, we're going to officially open another 25 miles of Little Sugar. That's the newest part of the trails. Um, and some of those People have been using it already, but uh, the trailblazers are going to officially open that on the 15th. Moving to Bowling Springs Park, we just this week started to take out-of-state uh, reservations. That was a, a travel ban that was lifted uh, last week by the governor. So what we are doing is screening people coming from hot spots. And if they're from any of the known hotspots, such as New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, New Orleans, and right now, Texarkana, um, we are telling them we can't accommodate them at this time, and they're welcome to call back. We are still doing in-state residents and certainly our members, and that is self-contained only. We have not opened back up primitive tent camping, although I do 
think that that will open. My guess is, Tom alluded to this earlier, but I, I know many of you have been watching the governor. I'm going to guess when we get closer to phase two, some of those restrictions will be open. So more to come on that. The park has been very, very busy. As Val alluded to, the back of the park, we have closed off the parking. Uh, I envision we're going to keep that closed off for a while just because the park is so busy and it does help with us managing the COVID-19 social distancing. Um, so that's, you know, in play there. Um, the fitness centers, uh, we already heard great reports uh, from Mary and, and um, Debbie. I'm actually here at Branchwood with Jessica today. She's done a great job in training her team. Uh, we've had a slow and steady group of people coming in, including lap swimmers. Uh, that does seem to be our problem child. Um, you know, some of them are, as Tom mentioned, sort of stretching what is lap swimming, and we've been trying to address it uh, today. I envision some of that's going to loosen up, too, by governor's recommendations, but for now we're playing it as safe as we can. Um, the pools and beaches, because I'm sure people are asking and wondering, we're going to start to see a lot of activity down there. Rick kind of mentioned it uh, earlier. We're going to all be on deck Wednesday and Thursday trying to get the beach cleaned up. We specifically didn't touch the beach because last year, you may recall, uh, even if COVID was not a factor, last week, one week before we opened, we got a major storm, and I lost probably a fourth of my sand. And so we've had the sand on um, on reserve. It's here at the POA, and we will be moving it with conveyor belts on Thursday and Friday. That's done in partnership with Mac, so they work hard to help us look good. The pool, we are getting those ready. Jessica's right here, and I'll let her see if she has anything to add. But she's been working hard for the last couple of weeks. You know, we weren't sure when and if we could open or how that would look. But now we received guidance on Friday that we can open Memorial Weekend. That is our plan. We talked to the health inspectors this morning. We have our health inspections uh, planned for next Wednesday. There is a lot of work that has to be done before the pools and beach can open. And it's not about all the things that we do every year to make those things that are very high touch on operations. It's really about social distancing. And while Tom mentioned the guidelines um, in some cases are very specific. In other cases, they're very broad. And so we're going to do the best we can. We spent, I don't know how many hours, I don't even know what day it is or what time it is, but I think it's still Monday, uh, brainstorming just today. And we've been reaching out to some members, even we did some informal polls with people that walked into Branchwood today and we said, hey, if you got to come to the adult pool at Kingsdale, but you were only allowed to pick a particular time slot, you know, would you do that? We've gotten some direct feedback, so that's good. Um, no decisions are made in a vacuum. Jessica, do you want to add anything? Um, no, I think Joan really touched on all of it. Um, the one thing I will say is it's going to be, we're, you know, we're working hard and it's going to be kind of a, a different ball game with training um, the lifeguards in this short of time for regular uh, in service and for knowing how to deal with the COVID situation. But we're going to push through and we're going to have a great summer. So, yep. well, one big thing that you can imagine it'll be restrictions on capacity. That's the number one rule is the 50% of bather load. And our bather load is very high anyway. But you have to have pool chairs distanced properly. And believe it or not, that transfers into the pool. So just imagine a four-year-old kid who's a great swimmer. Is he really going to understand what six feet in the water looks like and then he can only talk to his sister? It's a, it's a, a new dynamic, and we're all going to be able to write books after this. So it's all good. The marina as a – Yeah. Are you going to have them make reservations like they do using the rec centers for swimming? We're thinking through that. We're thinking through that, Mary, about how we can manage that. So TBD, uh, that's certainly on the table as are many things, but uh, we we definitely are going to have basically two and a half hour time slots three times a day of windows of when you can come in and you'll be asked to leave. 
after that time slot is over so that we can help serve more members. We'll also be using wristbands to know that, hey, you came in with a Tweety Bird wristband. It's 4 o'clock. You should have been gone three hours ago. So lots in play, but the reservation TBD, we're definitely thinking through how that best could be managed. So thank you. That's a great question. Thanks. Uh, go ahead. Did somebody, okay. I thought maybe somebody else said something. Um, the marina is, as Rick mentioned, um, really doing really well. He mentioned how busy the, the lakes are. And we certainly see that a uh, lock woman at Marina trades doing a great job. You know, this week we'll probably get some rain out days, but um, this weekend we have all our boats out and um, lots of rentals. And certainly we've partnered with Tommy, who's doing a great job with his um, tailgate, tailgating. So we even had a special a couple of weeks ago that um, let people rent a boat for a discounted rate. The last thing I'll mention is pickleball and tennis. Um, Ken wasn't there today. We put up three new pickleball nets at Metfield. When we put them up, they certainly work, but they're not the, the right style for outdoor courts. So we've reordered the appropriate nets, but everybody seems to be happy as Val mentioned, lots of people um, using the courts um, and tennis as uh, I think it was Mary that alluded to is super busy. So it's a new world and we're just happy to be serving people. That's it for me at this time. Joe, the new nets are up. They put them up on um, Monday, I think. No, they were up. When you yes, but are you talking about the new new nets or the new nets? Because day, day one when we opened, we put up three new nets. No, and they, then put we determined... they put different ones up on Friday, I think it was. Oh, Jake got to it. Fantastic. Thank yep. you, Val. I have a, I have a question. We've had some issues with people showing up to play badminton, um, cross, um, on the pickleball courts. And since we only have three pickleball courts, they say that it's open to anybody to play any kind of sport on the courts. Is that true or not true? Well, do we have anything in writing about that? The short answer would be no. Um, I think what you're seeing is the COVID uh, carry on, which is people are so bored. They're looking for any place that they can get, you know, yeah. badminton, as you mentioned, um, that's not even, wouldn't even be a regulation net to play. No. I mean, that's a completely different net. Um, I would be very comfortable with anyone saying these are reserved for pickleball. All the signs relate to pickleball. I can put another sign up, but, you know, I, I, although this is my new motto, you can't sign the world, but we're sure trying. Yeah. I'd be happy to put up a, a sign, but I think it's better when members talk to other members and just say, this is a pickleball court. Um, uh, we appreciate you finding another space. Yeah. Well, we tried that with the lacrosse guy, and he got kind of a with us. And I'll put a I'll, I'll I'll put in the request for a sign. Okay, thanks you a can lot. Then point to it. Then you can point to it. Yeah, thank you. Sure. Sure. Uh, Joan, since since the Branchwood pool is open for lap swimming, I'm assuming the locker rooms now are open. No, they're not. No. 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 Uh, okay. Hang on a second. Jessica's saying something. As of today, the locker rooms were not open. She's are you, listed the health thing of having to say recommend <laughs> Oh, um, they are not open at this time. We, uh, I guess they just said something about you, you know, you recommend, we recommend you shower, but you don't have to do it on site. I have not seen guidance that they've requested that the locker rooms be open yet so that okay. hasn't been changed so we're following that guideline it's crazy because what they basically did jan i think this is what you're alluding to the arkansas health department which is pretty common in every state requires you to take a shower before you go into a swimming pool but they basically waived that when they locked down the locker rooms and reopened pools okay okay thank you and and then the only other thing i have is that I have to give you and Jessica kudos 
for the uh, videos of exercise classes. Oh. They've been great. You guys have worked very hard. And those of us that do those really appreciate them. Thanks. Well, thanks, Jan. Um, yeah, my team has gone um, really gangbusters over it. Um, it's been a lot of work, but Lucy, for instance, Allison, um, Carrie, Jessica, myself, we've had a blast knowing Good. that we're reaching people, and we are. So I appreciate that feedback, it's, and I'll share it with the team. Well, it's and I, I want to second it. This is Debbie, but also you could get rid of Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> She's too hard. <laughs> She's too hard. Oh, you're a strong, tough bird, Debbie. You can do her workout. <laughs> now, the beauty of it is I can just shut the computer off. <laughs> Also, Joan, you, you notice that I make Jessica do the full push-ups, Debbie, and I just do the one thing. Then you do the, yeah, you do the, yeah, or you sit on the chair for the chair yoga. <laughs> exactly. And I know, Joan, you don't have any word on the hot tub at Branchwood, but uh, is that governor related to, and is that going to come down it, from? It the, is, it, and it's a great question. But to be honest with you, Jan, I don't know how I social distance in that hot tub. Oh, I think true. Reardon, I could do it with very limited numbers, but Branchwood is simply no. too small. I don't see that going back up anytime soon. No. Okay, thanks. Joan, the other question is, do you have any numbers for any view viewership on either Facebook or YouTube for the classes that you've been offering? Yes, we do have data. In fact, we um, look at that daily. Um, I will tell you that there's many different views. So what I don't know is that Debbie went on, saw Carrie, and said, oh, they're doing jumping jacks. I'm out. Uh, <laughs> but that's still time. Versus, um, the other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just picking on you. I know you do a lot. Um, but um, we do see how many people, when we're actually live streaming, appear to be fully engaged. And that's okay. been averaging in the 20s for most classes, some less, some more. Okay. Um, but we have gotten as high as 1,500 hits per class. And I would say low really now, contacts. That's, again, they might have tuned in. Gary wanted to see what we were doing. He watched for 10 minutes. He might have done part of the workout. Uh, you know, Mary did the whole workout or whatever, but as low as 600 and as high as 1500. So we're, we're very happy. And the instructors are getting feedback too from some of their personal followings, such as, such as yourself. Um, Allison who teaches Zumba has really had very good, um, live attendance and as, as well as feedback. So that's great. Um, we're pretty happy. And Jessica has done a couple of fantastic kids workouts and um, yeah. we have a kid in the audience it's it's been fun but i'm i'm done now thank you i have one question joan about the pools i'm going to imagine some competition for reservations are you guys thinking about ways to to manage that if uh, members have a hard time getting into the pool because of that we are thinking about everything, Chris. It's a great question. Yes, I mean, at some point, we'll probably have to turn somebody away, whether it be from a reservation or from a walk-up, because as I mentioned earlier, the bather load is the number one restriction. Right. And then, so even if you could allow, and I'm just gonna use this number, this is a working number, the large pool at Kingsdale, you know, we have three. We have the adult pool, we have the activity pool, and the baby pool. That working number is 50, but I don't know, how many of those 50 want to be on the deck and might dip their toes in the water? You know, mm -hmm. four of them might be adults to one kid. We have to manage the six foot distancing on the deck and in the pool. And Chris, you and I would have to be six feet away because we're not uh, family members, but right. you, let's say, and your significant other could be sitting in two chairs next to it. So it's very complicated and uh, it's, it, we're still evolving. So, We'll put out a lot more announcements in the e-letters as we get a little closer. Um, yeah, okay, good. Yeah, just you got your hands full with that. I understand totally. All right. Thanks, everyone. Judy? Hi, everybody. Hey, Judy. Nice to see you. 
I'm kind of over Zoom. I've been Zooming a lot, so <laughs> I'm ready to get back back into a meeting, but uh, it's good to see everybody. Yeah, um, uh, you know, things are pretty much the same in marketing other than we are um, high volume sign production. Um, <laughs> thanks, Joan and Rick. <laughs> All of our, um, all the changes uh, has produced a uh, different work for us, but uh, nonetheless, it's work. Um, the, the magazine is in the final edit stage. So we're excited to get this summer magazine out. Um, we're cutting a couple of pages strictly really because of the calendar. So um, the calendar is, you know, really, really has been a real challenge with this magazine. So many things have been canceled and um, so many things are unknown, but it's it's going to turn out to be a really good magazine as normal. Um, yeah, the, you know, the, we're still getting really good hits on the e-newsletter. So um, not only on just the open rate is over the top as far as marketing standards go, but also the click through rate. So people actually digging deeper into the newsletter is really good. So all of those things, um, we're seeing good activity. Connections is a little hard, um, strictly because again, the changes, but um, at least now that things are starting to open up, I think we'll get some more continuity back. So um, that's pretty much marketing. I don't know of a whole lot more other than Looking for more signs, Joan. Send it on. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Judy. Uh, Gary, can yeah. I say something real quick about the welcome meet and greet? Oh, yeah. Please do. Okay. Everything is on hold. We were going to do one in June. I talked with Tom, and we agreed. We have absolutely no idea when they'll be able to have a large meeting. So we're going to look maybe at the fall. For right now, there's absolutely no movement on the welcome meet and greets. It's understandable. Gary, can I jump in here? Yeah. Okay, since this is my last meeting with you as chair, I just want to express my thank you to each and every one of you for your hard dedication, your hard work, and your commitment to each of the amenities. And it's because of your group that the amenities are used as much as they are. And we appreciate and thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you for Thank your you, service, Ruth. Yeah. More than welcome. I've enjoyed it. Thank you, Ruth. Uh, next committee meeting is June 8th. It's early in the month, four o'clock. Hopefully it'll be somewhere else, but if not, it'll be right here. <laughs> On Zoom. <laughs> Gary, right. I'll, I'll get the minutes out within the next few days to everybody for proofing. Okay, great. Thanks, Deb. Uh, is there anything else? Well, thanks for uh, Zooming uh, along with me today. I appreciate it and uh, have a great evening. Thanks. Take care, everybody. Thank Hopefully you. We'll see you all right. soon. Bye -bye. Thanks, everybody.